The countdown to the new year is complete. Now the focus shifts to the countdown for Flight 12. SpaceX is making strong progress on the final section of its launch system as it prepares for the next Starship launch, which is scheduled for later this month. Another major point of attention across the industry is Congress's rejection of the proposed cuts to NASA's budget, along with discussions surrounding the newly proposed funding plan. After that, we will take a closer look at a stunning image of Mars recently sent back by the Curiosity rover. Let's dive right in on today's episode of Great SpaceX. We are still in the early days of January. January, yet with each passing day, concern continues to grow about whether Starship Flight 12 can realistically launch in the near term. Expectations were high entering the new year, but recent developments have placed the schedule under increased scrutiny. At present, Starbase appears to be in an unusual transitional phase where critical hardware is complete, but has not yet begun moving through the next stages of testing and integration. Both B-19 and S-39 have completed production. Under normal circumstances, this would signal that preparations for rollout and testing were imminent. However, neither vehicle has moved so far. At the same time, multiple road and runway closures have been announced, yet these closures have been tied primarily to test tanks rather than flight hardware. This has created an odd sense of pause where activity is clearly ongoing, but progress toward Flight 12 seems slower than expected. That said, this lull may be misleading. SpaceX appears to be laying the groundwork for a series of rapid and decisive steps, and recent developments suggest that momentum is beginning to build again. One of the most significant milestones is the completion of the SQD system for Pad 2. In the early morning hours of January 6th, SpaceX rolled the SQD arm extension toward Pad 2. Observers quickly noted that this section appears to be the same unit that was previously assembled at the Sanchez site, indicating that it had been prefabricated and was ready for final installation. By late morning on the same day, a massive crane was brought in to lift the arm extension into place. The operation involved carefully aligning the new section with the portion with the portion that had already been assembled the previous month. This process was visible from multiple camera angles around the launch site, providing a clear confirmation that SpaceX had reached a critical stage in Pad 2 readiness. Previously, the first section of the SQD had been installed, but that earlier installation seemed to consist primarily of the foundational support structure. It provided the necessary mechanical backbone, but it didn't include the system responsible for actual vehicle surfacing. The newly installed section is very different in both appearance and function. This new portion of the SQD is responsible for the core operational tasks, including propellant transfer to the Starship vehicle. That role is immediately evident from its denser and more intricate pattern, intricate design. Compared to the simpler support structure below it, this section features a complex arrangement of piping, valves, and an interface panel that will connect directly to the ship. These elements are essential for fueling operations and represent represent one of the final missing pieces of the Pad 2 ground system. Many observers believe that this installation may mark the completion of the last major component required for Pad 2 to become fully operational. If that assessment is correct, then the ground system is either ready to enter service or prepared to undergo final integrated testing. In either case, this development strongly suggests that SpaceX is nearing the point where launch operations can begin in earnest. Before any vehicle can be stacked at the launch pad, however, both stages must pass through the mass test site. In a previous update, SpaceX rolled the shift aft two ring section to Massey and placed it on the test tank B18.3. This move was widely interpreted as preparation for stress testing related to hot staging. The purpose of this configuration appears to be evaluating how the ship aft section performs under extreme loads that simulate hot staging conditions. Hot staging introduces unique structural stresses due to the ignition of upper stage engines while the booster is still attached and valid Validating this capability is critical for future flights. Evidence now suggests that this test phase may have concluded. Around noon on the 6th, the large crane returned to the site and attached to the tank section. The crane then lifted the ship aft section off test tank B18.3. While SpaceX has not released any official results, the absence of visible damage or extended troubleshooting strongly indicates that the test was successful. If the test met its objectives, then it likely confirmed that the ship aft section can withstand the intense forces associated with hot staging while bearing the mass of the upper stage. 
This would represent another important validation step for the Starship system. With that work complete, both the ship aft section and test tank B18.3 have likely fulfilled their immediate roles. They are expected to depart Massey or be relocated within the area to clear space for testing the actual Flight 12 prototypes. The next major milestone everyone is waiting for is cryogenic testing of the flight hardware. The key question now is which vehicle will roll first, B-19 or S-39? Each option carries different implications for the overall test flow and schedule. If B-19 rolls to Massey first, it could complete its cryogenic testing relatively quickly. That would free up time later in the process for S-39 to proceed through its own steps without overlap. Alternatively, if S-39 rolls first, it could complete cryogenic testing while B-19 remains at the production site. Afterward, B-19 could arrive at Massey for its own tests, while S-39 returns to the launch site for engine installation and preparation for static fire testing. In practical terms, both sequences are workable. Each offers efficiencies depending on how smoothly testing proceeds. However, there is a strong argument in favor of rolling B-19 first. Doing so could allow for two consecutive static fire tests, one for the booster and one for the ship, in a clearer and more predictable sequence. More importantly, prioritizing the booster reduces risk to the the schedule. If issues arise, history suggests that rebuilding or repairing a booster may be faster than addressing major problems on a ship. The experience with B-18 demonstrated how unexpected complications can introduce delays and minimizing similar risks is a sensible approach. Of course, the hope remains that neither vehicle encounters serious issues and that testing proceeds smoothly. Still, contingency planning is essential when working with a system as complex as Starship. In addition to vehicle movements, SpaceX is likely still working to complete the support structure at the test platform. At present, the platform appears to consist of a relatively basic framework. It remains unclear when the company will finalize this structure or what additional systems may be integrated before testing begins in earnest. During this preparation phase, static fire tests are clearly expected at both ends of Starbase. These tests will showcase the power of the Raptor 3 engines while also serving as validation for recent upgrades to the test infrastructure and launch pad systems. Each firing provides valuable data and helps confirm that recent modifications perform as intended. Ultimately, however, the most important question remains the schedule. With visible progress at both the Massey test site and launch site, attention naturally turns to when Starship Flight 12 might actually lift off. SpaceX has a well-earned reputation for accelerating timelines in ways that often seem improbable. If the first major hardware rolls occur during the first half of the month, cryogenic testing for both stages could realistically take place by mid-month. Because the booster and ship are tested at different locations, some of this testing could occur in parallel. If cryogenic tests conclude successfully by the third week of the month, only a few additional days would be needed for inspections, data review, and final preparations. Under this scenario, a launch attempt in the final days of January remains technically possible. A late January launch naturally raises skepticism. The timeline is aggressive, and any unexpected issue could push the schedule into February or beyond. Still, SpaceX has repeatedly demonstrated its ability to compress timelines once all the necessary pieces are in place. It's also worth remembering that not long ago, many doubted that B-19 could be completed as quickly as it was. Yet SpaceX set a new internal record by finishing the booster in just 28 days. That achievement serves a reminder that conventional expectations do not always apply at Starbase. Opinions on the launch date will continue to vary and debate is inevitable. What remains consistent is the broad support for Starship Flight 12 and the anticipation surrounding its outcome. Enthusiasm for this flight reflects not just interest in a single launch, but belief in the broader vision behind the program. Beyond flight preparations, progress continues across other areas of Starbase. At the production site, construction of Gigabay remains in full swing. The lower levels of the structure are now clearly taking shape, and work continues steadily upward. This is evident in the rising height of the construction towers, which are now approaching the elevation of the offices atop the Megabay. Construction at Gigabay continues with additional sections still to be erected and the towers likely to be raised again to reach their final height. Once the main structure is complete, work will shift to interior systems, including heavy equipment, assembly stands, work platforms, and offices, transforming Gigabay into a high-volume Starship production hub. Elsewhere, newly built composite overwrapped pressure vessels have been moved for testing at the Massey site. 
These redesigned COPVs, marked by a red paint scheme, are built to withstand higher pressures following lessons learned from earlier incidents. Thorough testing will be critical to validating their improved durability and performance. At the launch site, Pad 1's tank farm is being dismantled and cleared, with several tanks removed and potentially relocated to Florida for use at other SpaceX facilities. Even without launches, constant upgrades and reconfiguration at Starbase underscore SpaceX's focus on long-term readiness and continued evolution. Beyond Starbase, attention has turned to Washington and NASA's budget outlook. Throughout 2025, proposed cuts under the Trump administration raised concerns about reducing or eliminating programs deemed redundant or inefficient. The proposed fiscal year 2026 budget would have lowered NASA funding to $18.8 billion, a 24% reduction with science funding cut by as much as 75%. These proposals drew strong opposition over potential losses in scientific capability and long-term exploration goals. In response, Congress announced its opposition on January 5th, releasing a budget plan allocating $24.4 billion to NASA for fiscal year 2026. Restored funding prioritizes science, including $500 million for the Dragonfly mission to Titan, targeting a 2028 launch, and $300 million to complete the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, which could launch as early as this fall. Mars's sample return, however, did not receive restored funding due to technical challenges and rising costs. The budget plan still requires approval in both chambers, leaving final outcomes uncertain. Meanwhile, on Mars, NASA's Curiosity rover has released a new panoramic image from the slopes of Mount Sharp. Captured in November of 2025, over two Martian days, the composite view highlights changing light conditions and shows Curiosity's tracks as it climbs the mountain within Gale Crater. The panorama overlooks the Boxwork Formation, a region of mineral-rich ridges shaped by ancient groundwater. These structures preserve evidence of Mars's past water activity and shifting environments. Together, these developments underscore the enduring momentum of space exploration, offering reminders of both the challenges ahead and the worlds still waiting to be explored. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep keep looking up.